Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. A few weeks ago, Nvidia released a refresh of the GTX 1650 that replaced the memory for GDDR6. And there's been plenty of videos and lots of other channels that have already shown the difference between the original and the refresh, so we're not gonna do that. The other reason is because, yeah, we never received one of the original ones, so we can't do it even if we wanted to. It's gonna annoy some people, but there's just not a lot we can do. What we're gonna do instead is compare the refresh 1650 with some other budget-focused GPUs that we have on hand. It sounds pretty simple, but there's always more to the story. Don't worry guys, that was an empty box. I didn't really throw a like complete GPU in the box. I would never do that. Anyway, as usual, we're using our GPU test system, which is running the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Ultra with the i7-8700K and 16 gigs of Team Group Dark Z at 3600 megahertz. Now, if we didn't test a GPU in this video, it just means that we don't have one to test. Or yeah, we just have never had one of them at all, ever. Now we don't include 1% highs or lows with these tests because for us, it just introduces a whole lot of testing and getting an average frame rate gives you a good indication of the expected performance anyway. Also with the Linux benchmarks we retested every single GPU on the latest build of Ubuntu 20.04 and just be aware though that with Linux benchmarks they're always going to be different to Windows benchmarks so some cards will actually perform better in Linux than in Windows and vice versa. And yeah, it also depends on the benchmark as well. And with these benchmarks for every single GPU benchmarking video we do, we use the same ones every time. So you can go to any other GPU video that we've ever done on the channel and you can compare this video to anything else. And we like using testing that's repeatable because gameplay testing is not repeatable and it's unreliable. There's too many variables and ultimately I just want the only variable to be the GPU and not a section of gameplay on a certain map of a game that no one plays. And yes, Destiny 2, no one plays it. Anyway, I know some people don't like the way that we do our testing, but to be honest, it's repeatable and it's accurate. So with that said, let's kick off some benchmarks. Let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider in Windows and Linux. We found that between Ubuntu 18.04 and 20.04 that the results remained the same in Tomb Raider and nothing had changed since we originally banished the 1650 Super on its own. So that was actually a really good indication of what changed. And to be honest, I was kind of expecting that anyway, based on the way that Tomb Raider was actually ported to Linux. Now let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed three tests in total. We used the 4K optimized preset, the 1080p extreme preset, and also a custom 1440p preset with motion blur and depth of field disabled. Now the Linux doping gel benchmark doesn't perform as well as the Windows version, but we show these comparisons anyway to give you an idea of what's going on here. And that being said, we did see a little bit of performance uplift with Ubuntu 20.04. So we had to retest everything again to give you guys the accurate results with all the tests that you're seeing right now. Next up is Basemark GPU in Windows and Linux again. Now, Basemark is pretty good. It gives us a good indication of Vulkan performance and we performed all the tests on the high preset as you're seeing right now. And Basemark has also had another update recently and the performance of the benchmark with that update hasn't actually increased all that much at all. But what we're seeing is with Ubuntu 20.04, there's been some optimizations and the performance is better because of the operating system, not the version of the benchmarking tool because we did test that off camera and out of the review. Just some independent testing to make sure that we weren't making stuff up. Next up is the Final Fantasy 15 benchmarking tool. Now this is a Windows only benchmark and we're beginning to phase this test out as well because yeah, well, the only reason why we still use this is because we've tested so many GPUs with it, so it makes a lot of sense for us to share those results with you. But other than that, uh, in the next few months, we're probably gonna stop using it because yeah, we just won't need to use it anymore.
Next up is the Fall Armor Benchmark. Now we perform all of these tests with the Extreme preset. There's no Linux benchmark for Fall Honor, so obviously we can't show it. So whatever we're showing right now is Windows only benchmarking. And you guys can get an idea of the performance with this benchmark. We didn't do any overclocking since we had to retest so many different things on all the cards, but I did record some extra data with this new GPU. So with one hour of the GPU stress test in Fermark, we saw the 1650 max out at around 64 degrees, which is pretty acceptable. And yeah, I, it didn't exceed the fan speed of 75%, which is actually pretty good. And at 75% as well, there's also no audible sound fans are really really quiet but that being said it's a pretty low-end gpu so i mean what else do you expect the only time the fans actually ramped up at all was when ubuntu was initializing the drivers when it was booting up and it spins for about one second otherwise it's a pretty quiet card for budget builds although we'll come back to that now when we talk about the price to performance with this new GDE DR6 version. Now that version is going for around 169 US dollars for the card that we're showing in the video compared to the original price, which is up around 10 US dollars. It's pretty negligible, but yeah, it, it, that ten dollars can also be the difference between whether you're going to buy it or not. Now, Steve from Hardware and Box has actually done a really interesting comparison video between the pre, the GDDR5 version and the GDDR6 version, and you can check that out in the top right-hand corner right now. Steve goes into depth and explains uh, basically what we're about to say next as well, and that is the question is. Um, and this is the whole overarching thing of this whole video. Is, is the 1650 Super version worth up? the extra money over this newer GDDR 1650? And as you can tell, I'm pretty apathetic with this video because the plain answer is yes, I would buy the Super version over, but no matter how many pointless refreshes that Nvidia decides to do, the Super version is always gonna be better value. And to be honest, <laughs> <laughs> and this is this is kind of annoying me. I have no idea why they decided to lower the core frequency, speed up the memory and put newer memory on the card when they basically made the 1650 obsolete anyway when the 1650 Super came out. And the only reason I can see them refreshing anything like this is because it's probably easier and cheaper to get GDDR6. Other than that, I think this is pretty pointless Regardless of a refresh or not, don't waste your money on the 1650 at all. It doesn't need to exist. Uh, there's lots of other secondhand cards on the market you can grab in the same price range just by trawling things like eBay or in America like Craigslist. And you can buy anything secondhand that's gonna wipe the floor with the 1650. If you wanted to buy one new though, in this price range, and I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but I'd go with an eight gig uh, 5500 XT or a, uh, 1650 Super. Both of those cards are pointless as well. But the truth is, uh, it's, it's slightly different to that though, because personally, I would spend a little bit more money and get some decent performance with the 1660 Super. That's my pick out of the budget focus cards. I think the 5600 XT is probably just outside that price bracket. That's also a pretty solid performance too. But yeah, spend a little bit more money and get the 1660 Super. That's my pick. And anyway, I'll drop links to all the GPUs shown in this video in the description. If that's something you were keen on exploring yourself, you can go and check all that stuff out as well. Also, I put a link to Steve's video in the description as well for Hardware Unboxed. He did a really good job on comparing the cards, so I didn't have to. And the, uh, the, the whole takeaway from this video is don't buy a 1650, regardless of if it's been refreshed or not, just save your money and don't waste it on this card. Simple as that. Don't like usually doing these kind of negative videos, but that's the truth. I don't think you should waste your money on it. And yeah. Anyway, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you're not to do and tell us what you hated about it. Consider hitting the join button to support the channel or getting early access on Floatplane as well. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. Also, don't buy this either. Thanks for watching.